Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Oh, okay, that's got to be a Fortnite dance. I thought, I thought, no! I thought she was teaching us a new dance. I was going to go along with it. No, I was mixing the philosophy and that's the beer. A new, that's and the next Fortnite dance. It's I don't a dance. Care. I don't even know what Fortnite is, but okay. It's a game that all my students Comment play. Comment down below and tell Mike what Fortnite is. Fuck no. Anyway. Uh, is that better than Pong? Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're getting culty. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking 120-minute IPA. From the Dogfish Head Brewery in Dover, Delaware. Milton. Milton, Delaware. Yes. So, one of those. One yeah. of those. I don't... Something like that. So I feel like I misrepresented this show a little bit. It's not, not like by much. all not cults. By much. We are talking about the Jesus cult and the Mithra cult. Um, I would love to do a show on cults generally, though, because they fucking fascinate me. Yeah. yeah. Like the six-pack philosophy cult. Uh, I've been obsessed with Scientology lately. That, that oh gives God. us money on Patreon. Please, please, please say that you're not, not, not thinking of converting oh, to Scientology. No. Okay. Hell no. It's just fascinating. It's terrifying is what it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, it can be both. So I, I was doing a little bit of research here trying to, I don't know how I got in this rabbit hole, but I got looking at Constantine the Great, uh, the guy that's known as the first Christian emperor, and I got into Mithraism and Christianity and uh, decided I wanted to do a show on it. So we're, we're doing something a little, we're doing one of my history topics today, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I think that'll be okay. Um, I think it'll be great. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So Constantine the Great. Uh, if you know your, your your history about this guy, he's known as his, throughout history as the first Christian emperor, okay? Uh, and there's a lot of controversy over exactly how Christian Constantine was. And I kind of wanted to uh, address that. Uh, Constantine comes to uh, comes to power during the uh, the time period of the, of the dual emperors. Yeah, uh, what had happened was Diocletian had decided that the imp- empire was was too large, and he needed to split it up to be able to to, to control it. Uh, when Constantine's father Constantius dies, and Constantine is the natural heir to the empire. Now they don't they don't do it through bloodline, but he's got a military. He's the guy that's that that's in charge of the empire. Basically in France and, and what's today Great Britain, mm-hmm. okay, uh, that part of Europe. His rival was a guy named Maxentius, who was the general and, and, and the Caesar in charge of, of Rome. And these two guys are, are going to end up uh, fighting each other at, uh, at, at probably one of the most famous battles of, of, of all time, the Battle of Milvian Bridge. Uh, what had happened was Maxentius had decided – to, to try and trap Constantine. He wants to reunite the empire with himself as, as the leader of this. So he had destroyed all the bridges coming into Rome, save one. That's Milvian Bridge. And he had taken the Milvian Bridge and destroyed it enough that the plan was that when Constantine crossed the bridge, when he got his army on top of this crossing the Tiber, that the bridge would collapse and, and, and destroy his, his, his empire. Mm-hmm. That was the plan. Uh, but, but what it's happening is as Constantine marches in, severely outnumbered, out, uh, all historical records say he was outnumbered at least four to one at this time period. And he, he he's, a, he's a follower of Saul Invictus. Saul Invictus is the, the eternal sun god, uh, the invincible sun god, actually, is what it, is, is what it means. Um, and he goes to pray. And according to the, to the story, as, as it's been, been passed down, uh, he sees the sign of God burning in the sky, uh, which is usually assumed to be the chi row. The, if you know what the chi row is, it's the, the, the P and the X. It's a Christian symbol. Mm-hmm. It, it looks like, it oh, looks yes, like a yes, P yes, with yes, an yes. X over it. Yes. That's the chi row. It's the first two uh, letters of Jesus' name in, in, in Greek. Okay, um, He sees this, this, this symbol with the words, in hoc signo vincis, by this sign you you will conquer, or literally, like, victory under this sign. Mm-hmm. Um, he orders his men to paint the, 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 the sign of God on their shields, and they go into this battle, uh, and instead of getting trapped on the bridge, they end up trapped, trapping Maxentius on this bridge, and Maxentius and his men largely drown uh, crossing this area. Uh, at the end of the day, he he wins the day, uh, marches into Rome, 
and he ends up making himself the Caesar, the the, the, the leader of all of all the Roman people. Mm-hmm. Uh, we know for a fact that he is the guy that makes it okay to be a Christian. He he makes he makes it makes Christianity an acceptable Roman religion. Now you'll hear a lot of people say that he makes Christianity the official religion of Rome. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. He makes it an acceptable religion. Um, therefore, he is called the first Christian emperor because of this. From this point forward, uh, Christianity is just going to going to explode and take over the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church grows out of this. Okay. Now the question is: uh, everything I've told you told you is it is an accepted fact. But I, I went out of my way to tell this story in such a way to show that there's different versions of this. Okay. Um, what exactly did Constantine paint on the shields? We have pictures of the time period and paintings that, that, that date back to that era. We have mosaics that date back to this. And in none of the mosaics do you see the Chiro. None of them. There's no Christian iconography on it. Mm-hmm. When he becomes emperor of, of the Roman people, uh, he eventually moves the capital to to Constantinople, Istanbul, names it Constantinople. I'm going to have it stuck in my uh, head all day now. You know, if you look at the things that this guy did, he he comes in and and, and he he puts a giant statue of himself in Constantinople, but he's dressed in the cloak and the garb of Mithra, of of the bringer of light, which was, Mm -hmm. Mithra was a minor uh, sun god, minor sun god. He was right under uh, Sol Invictus, the, the sun god. In fact, some say he was the son of this god. Oh. So uh, he, he, he did that. On his great arch that he put in, in, uh, in Rome, right outside the, uh, right outside the uh, Colosseum in Rome, <laughs> there's no Christian iconography on it. Mm-hmm. There's not any. But it is clearly a religious thing. So the question is, what happened? Uh, by the way, on top of that, on top of that that uh, arch they built, it's not there anymore because it's, it was destroyed. But uh, he had a statue of himself in the middle, driving a chariot with these horses pulling it. And on the holy days, which is uh, the the days of the uh, solstice, on those days the sun would set directly behind his head and light his head up, mm-hmm. which makes you wonder what what exactly is going on here. Uh, it, you know, is that a halo? Is that is that a symbol of being the god of the sun? What is here? What's happening? Well, and we see that imagery um, with Jesus a lot of times with him having like, we do. the sun halo. We, we do. Thing. We do. And, I, and I, I'm going to get into oh, that whenever we sorry. get into the Jesus and Mithra part because it's interesting oh. to me as we as we go through here. So what exactly is this guy, this guy doing? Now, when I told that story... Uh, That story has always been told. It's always bothered me since I was in in college anyway studying this, that you always see the Chi Ro. This is the symbol. And in all the paintings that that were done in the Renaissance and all, you see him looking at the heavens, and he sees the Chi Ro burning in the sky with in hoc signo vincis. Mm -hmm. But what the the, uh, original primary sources say is he saw the sign of God burning in the sky mm-hmm. with in hoc signo vincis. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that sounds like he saw the sun. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the and giver it, of life. Yada, yada. Yeah, and, and if you see the fact that that there's no Christian iconography, there's none of uh, there's none of this, but there is the summer solstice holiday that, that's behind him. There is him dressed as Mithra, the bringer of the sun. I think that that Constantine. What Constantine probably saw, and and the sign that he probably conquered under, was the sign of Mithra, the mm-hmm. sign of the sun. Now that is not necessarily a, a popular view. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to be as 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 unbiased as I possibly can here. We know that that he did make Christianity acceptable. We know that his mother was a great Christian. In fact. Uh, She's the one that, that, that he sent to Jerusalem to find the spot of the true cross and the spot of the manger. That's why we have these great holy churches there now mm-hmm. is because Constantine's mother went and did this. We know that he ordered the building of St. Peter's Cathedral. We know that he converted to Christianity. He waited until his deathbed. On his deathbed, he converted. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
the question, yeah. Okay, how accepted is the fact of him converting on his deathbed? Very accepted. He he called the the, the papa the the which is the the tenant of the eventually be the pope, the leader of the Saint Peter's Basilica to do it. It's it's pretty accepted. So if that's pretty accepted, why is this even a controversy? I mean. We're saying that he marched in, he saw God in the sky, and God won his war, but he didn't convert that day. He waited until yeah. he died. Like, why is... Well, because it's controversial because when he did this, most historians believe that about 10% of Rome was Christian. Mm-hmm. By his death, over 60% of Rome is estimated to be Christian. So you look at this and you say, uh, you know... Is it, it, is it a matter of convenience? There are a lot of historians that believe, not by no means all, by no means all. I don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm saying this is a uh, 100%. But a lot of historians believe that his acceptance of Christianity was about political control. Mm-hmm. Because the two big religions, uh, you know, coming out of the first century, uh, the time of Jesus, there were two cults that were, that were coming out. And I'm going kind to of, kind of jump here and talk about these two. You had Christianity ri- arising at the same time that Mithraism uh, was, was was coming about. You know, I've never heard of that before. Oh, it was a massive, massive religion. Uh, there, you can find, uh, they call them Mithraim. They're like churches to Mithra. Mm-hmm. You can find them all over Europe. There's hundreds of them. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. Strangely enough, they tend to be found underneath existing Christian churches. They, they're, they're in a cave underneath. That doesn't or, surprise in, me at all. In a low spot. Um, the problem with Mithraism is while it was uh, expanding at a faster rate than Christianity was in that first century, it lasts about 400 years, if that, three, th- between three and 400 years, and it's gone. Mm-hmm. And part of the reasoning behind this is that the cult of Mithra only accepted men. Women could That'll not participate. Uh, that makes it hard to hard to uh, to expand because the single biggest way that you get your religion is your religion of your parents, right? Yeah. Uh, now there's a lot of questions about Mithraism. I want to talk a little bit about it because I learned a lot doing this. I had always heard uh, that Mithra was a a, a, a Zoroastrian <laughs> god and that it came up through from, from Persia. Well, that 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 that's that's kind of true. Mm-hmm. Here's the issue that we run into. There was this god Mithra, who is a Zoroastrian divinity. Uh, Zoroastrian is is in Persia, a massive divinity. It was the god of light. He brought mm-hmm. the sun, oaths, the protector of truth, the guardian of justice, the guardian of harvest, the god of water. All of this. Wow. And as the Romans went through and found this Mithra, they brought it, and then you end up with with the Roman version Mithras. Okay, it's a it, they do what Romans do really well. Mm-hmm. They take part of something, and they create something quite a bit different out of it. Okay, they appropriated. Uh, they well synchronization. Go ahead. You have something to say? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna derail the yeah. show just a bit, but I do feel a need to say this because we did our like experiment show where we like had a conspiracy theory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just listening this to this. This is not one of those. This sounds like that. I promise you guys. We're not we're doing not, that again. We're not, we're not doing, doing that, that again. again. This is a real show. Yeah, yeah. So stay tuned. We're actually going somewhere with this. Although it's mainly Mike, so I don't know where we're yeah, going. Yeah. But this is not playing yeah, with I, you. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, really, I'm really just looking, trying to see if there's there's a connection here. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, so these Roman soldiers adopt this idea of Mithraism, but it's, it's, it's synchronized with, with the Roman idea. And it kind of becomes a cult of the Roman soldier. We know this for a fact because we have found all of these Mithraim everywhere. And and we found a lot of them. They're in, like, they, they tend to be underneath uh, future Roman Catholic churches, uh, which, which makes people wonder whether you could be part of Christianity and be a Mithraist, mm-hmm. okay? Which is where, where, where I'll, I'll, I'll just let the cat out of the back. This is what I think that Constantine was. I think he was a practitioner of both religions. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
uh, and, and that's hard for us to comprehend in the modern era of monotheism. But early Christianity was, would have been much more open to the idea. They wouldn't have even called themselves monotheistic. They would have understood the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as three different God. It's something a lot different. That's just. Well, and, and I, I, I you know, venture to say, tell me if I'm, I'm way off base here, but all that a, a Christian in that time, or a Christian leader in that time would require you to be to call you Christian is that you recognize that Yahweh is the top God. Uh, and and that you recognized that Jesus was a savior. Right, yeah. Right. You had to recognize both of those, th- th- those things. It, uh, Christianity at this point was much closer to Judaism, mm-hmm. much closer than it is today. Um, so they have this, this cult that ends up being a, a massive cult of, of the Roman soldiers, and, and and wherever the soldiers went, they took this this with them. Now we don't think that it was a, that it was a, a a religion that was open to everybody. While while there are cases of, of even slaves joining it, they weren't able to move up through the ranks because we have we right. have a little we have information on this. Uh, commoners could belong in it, but we see. We, we see in the archaeological evidence that the people that, that, that rose up tended to be high-ranking officers in the Roman military. Mm-hmm. Okay, Here's the other problem we have with Mithraism is, is that it was essentially a mystery cult. And that if you don't know what a mystery cult is, it's something where uh, the, the secrets are, are open only to the initiates. And you had to go to... So it's a secret society. It's a secret society. Like Masons. Like, very similar to the Masons, <laughs> and we'll see how similar it is. Oh, yay. Um, how similar this is to, 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 to some, several Masonic orders, where at every level you are initiated in and you get more of the secrets of it. You get mm-hmm. to n- know more about it. Because like Scientology. Of, because of this, there's, there's, there's not a lot of written record. So we have to look at the archaeological record. And this has created problems with this. Problems that I wasn't really aware of uh, until I, I got reading this stuff. Things that I had been taught in college as fact. As I looked at this and, and, and reached back, I realized where they they got this stuff from, and it, it gives you some question mm-hmm. because again, there's not a written record. It's interpretation of of what you see. Uh, these Mithraim, if you ever see them, uh, and I'm, I'm going to try and send you a picture for you to put a picture here. Of, uh, there, there's some that still exist, so you can see. Awesome. They tend to be in these caves underneath. Uh, they always have a picture of Mithra dressed in Persian-style uh, clothing uh, with a cap on that's the closest thing I could explain it is a Jacobite cap, if you know. It looks like a stocking cap almost on him. Oh, okay. And he's always killing a bull uh, at the front. And they interpret this uh, because it's at the front of a table where they have a ritual feast that he's the host of the feast. Mm-hmm. Um, this feast is uh, is venerated on the day of the sun, which mm-hmm. you know Sunday. Uh, uh, although it you know more often on on uh, uh, days of equinox and solstice, right? Uh, but here's the deal: they would that they would get together and they would. Eat, they would com- commune over mm-hmm. wine and bread. Well, that makes me wonder about something here because it sounds a lot like the Eucharist, mm-hmm. uh, the, the 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 Christian idea of of uh, celebrating the Last Supper. Right, and it, it in fact was the Last Supper idea because in Mithraism, at least it's believed that Mithra uh, never died. That Mithra was sent here by Sol Invictus, the mm-hmm. higher sun god, as the bringer of the, uh, the bringer of the sun, as the guy that was going to judge everything, and that he rose bodily into heaven and would return one day to judge people and take some to paradise and others would just be left behind. Oh. That sounds nothing like anything I've ever heard. But it's supposed to be... But, well, and, and again, they're happening at the same time. Right, right, right. So right. the question is... Uh, you know, are they? Is there synchronization going where where one is borrowing from the other? Are they both a product of of the environment of the time period? Uh, was one stealing from another? There was a guy named Saint Jerome who was a, a, a he, heavily heavily into the the what will be the Catholic faith, who uh, 
who kind of made fun of this and said that this is a parody of Christianity, that they are making fun of Christianity with this, that their version of the Last Supper is a demonic version of it, and that they're stealing this. This is in the first century, okay? Uh, Well, or is it what Christianity has done for centuries and adopting the practices of another religion for the purpose of overtaking it. Well, and, and let me <coughs> let me get a little bit of a soapbox. This is something that's bugged me about Christianity, and I'm sure I would see it in any other religion were <coughs> that the environment I grew up in. So I'm not picking on Christianity, yeah, yeah. but I have heard so many times Christianity accuse, and I don't know if this is the case in this case, but I'm just, I'm on a soapbox, <coughs> accuse older religions of stealing from them. Yeah. Well, uh, again, you have to accept that they're that they're older religions. When Christianity, yes, Christianity, you can date to a time period. You can yes. date zero. to Jesus, the, the year zero of, <laughs> yeah. of the Christian calendar. But Christians would not date that to that. They would say that they're part of the Jewish tradition that is older. Now, it, it comes down but, to what okay, you what fine. What, there are older religions who have stories very similar to Jesus' story, which I, shouldn't have happened yet. Well, the, and you the can't the blood accuse story. them. Yeah. Well, you can if you if you excuse me, if you believe excuse me. If you the believe the in the, the, the Judaistic foundation myth, then you have to believe that that is actually older. Okay. Now you can't find you can't find written evidence of it, but you wouldn't expect to find ri- written evidence of some of this stuff before writ- writing. But 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 here here's what I'm specifically griping about, um, and there are other things as well. But I'll specifically gripe about this because I think it's more solid. There are other figures in other religions who did things very similar to Jesus. Yes, absolutely. And Christians will who existed before Jesus by their own timelines. Yeah. And Christians will accuse them of stealing from Jesus yeah, yeah. when, by their own timelines, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, I, Unless I, they had a time machine. I'm you with know. you. I, I agree with you on that. Uh, <laughs> so it, it, it's, it's at least interesting to me. Yeah. Now, everything I've told you so far is stuff that we can get from the archaeological record. Right. Mm-hmm. But then you have this stuff. The 18 and 1900s was like the, the golden age of linking Mithraism and, and, and Christianity. It was a lot of psychologists got into this. Okay. And that's where a lot of my facts that I'd learned in college came from, were from these books that I studied in, in World Civ classes um, and stuff. But I'm finding that I can't find where they find this information. Okay. okay? For instance, uh, it's it's generally accepted by a, by a lot of people that, uh, that Mithra's birthday was celebrated on December 25th. And that Jesus borrowed that. I think that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at Christianity and you look at the story of the birth of Jesus, it, it couldn't have happened December twenty fifth. Right. You don't you don't have you don't have shepherds she, in the field yeah. at that time period. Right. It couldn't have happened then. And it makes sense to me that they would borrow a, an earlier uh, uh, day in order to to take that that celebration and overlay Christianity. We've seen that with, with Easter. We've mm-hmm. seen that over and over again. Yeah. They overlay. Yeah. But here's the problem. We can't find anywhere in a written record that says Mithra was born on December 25th. Right. What we can find is they take these hints and they go, December 25th is, winter solstice. is roughly the winter solstice. Mm-hmm. Roughly the winter solstice. Uh, this guy is the sun god. Therefore, he rose on that day. And, it, and while it makes sense... And I'm willing to accept that it's that it that it's it's plausible. I'm not willing to come out as a historian and say Mithra was born on December 25th. Does that make sense? It does. It does. So I'm trying to be fair about this, but mm-hmm. it does. But it is plausible and it makes sense. Right. Okay. That they would pick that day. Uh, Mithra was from the archaeology. We see Mithra being born uh, from either from. It's hard to tell what it is. Either he's born from an egg or he's born from a rock. Again, you're looking okay. at archaeology. Yeah, right. There's something here, sense. and he's coming out of it. It would make uh, sense for it to be an egg, just because that's traditionally been a symbol of life. Yeah, yeah, but 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 again, born of something like, or but possibly, you know, he's coming up from the earth yeah. with the earth mother. We don't yeah, know either of those. Would but make sense. either way, in the 1800s, the uh, the myth came about, and this is what I was taught in college, and what I believed until I until I read this was that Jesus was born of a virgin birth. I'm sorry, that Mithra was born of a virgin birth, which is the Jesus story. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess he is a virgin birth if you take the take it to the point that the egg and the stone are, haven't had sex. Right, but, but, theoretically. But 
I, I don't think there's. I don't think we can find a real textual link a to person. that. What we can find, and what I think is amazing, and, and synchro- synchronized here is both were born from miraculous births. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And 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 I think that's something that that is in common. It's not at all uncommon in religion. I mean, yeah. Zeus jumped from the forehead of of of, of, of his father. With mm-hmm. the term "splitting headache" comes from. Uh, you have uh, Venus being born from the the foam of the sea. You have mm-hmm. uh, you know this is something that 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 seems to be common. But again, both of these have this idea of a miraculous birth. There is. There is stories that date back to about the second century. That uh, that when uh, when Mithra was born, that he was visited by, visited in a manger by traveling wise men, and they brought gifts of frank, frankincense and myrrh. Now, here's the deal: it's from the second century. Mm-hmm. Here's the question: that's after the Christianity, so. Right. The idea that Christianity borrowed that from Mithraism, I don't know that that happened, Mm -hmm. but somebody borrowed from somebody. Right. Uh, Again, synchronization in here with all these. I think the greater uh, the greater link is in every picture you see of Mithra, he always has the halo around his head of the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Always, and those pictures far predate the use of the halo. In Christianity, mm-hmm. that's going to be something that, that 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 to me was clearly borrowed, right? Clearly borrowed from this, um, and and I, I I at least wanted to look at this as I wanted to take an honest look and say, are they linked? Are there is there something? You know, are they the same story? Because you can find many cases where people argue that the Jesus story and the Mithra story are the same, right? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the, this mystery cult. Before we do yeah, that. Go ahead. You want to talk about this beer? Yeah. Yeah, probably it's probably a good, a good idea. Um, who wants to start this one? I started last time. So, Anna. You want me to do it? Yeah. I don't care. I'll do it. What are we drinking, John? We are drinking one 20-minute IPA. Dogfish Head Brewing Company in Milton, Delaware. You got yes. it. I got it this time. It, or maybe Dover. I don't know. One of the two. Um all right. Uh, I knew I was going to lie. In all honesty, this is a beer I've had before. I think we've all had it before. Um, I was I was excited about this beer. Um, I'm always excited about Dogfish Head beers. They they do something different. They don't try and be the same old beer everybody else does. You know, they 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 they, they don't try. And, They're adventurous. Yeah, they don't try and fit in a uh, you, you know in in a in a set. Um, what kind of beer is this called? Do you? Do you it, it's an IPA. It's an IPA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I really do, like. Do you want me to talk a little bit about the method? And yeah. Go, why? Ahead, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, Dogfish Head uh, came out with a, a ninety minute IPA first, and they actually I they had a sixty minute first. They, they may have had yeah they had sixty first, and they went ninety and one twenty. So they actually kind of kicked off the whole IPA craze, and what they did is instead of adding all their hops at the beginning and then another one at the end for scent. They they made uh, they made this little device and it was made out of like a, a a children's game that vibrated. I don't remember which one. Um, maybe maybe Operation where it vibrated when you hit yeah. the thing. Or anyway, it was it was some children's game, and they took this vibrating motor out of it and put it on this little slope and took the hops in there and had it slowly vibrate the hops into the beer so it added slowly over an hour over sixty minutes, and. <coughs> That's where they got their 60-minute IPA. They then said, well, what could we do to make it, you know, hoppier and longer? And they did it again for 90 and again for 20. And each one, they also brewed longer, uh, so they have a little bit higher alcohol content. So that's kind of where we got the names of 60, 90, and 120-minute IPA. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, let, let, let me tell you what I, what I think about this. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a nice color. It's got a nice flavor. It's beautiful. The, the hoppiness is Honestly, it's it, it's a little more hoppy than I like, but mm-hmm. it's not. I, I think your IPA people are gonna are gonna greatly appreciate this. Are we still getting a good sound? Because I'm just getting. I, a I think you're a sound little here. bit quiet. Okay. Um, so he, th- this particular beer, I think, has got a, uh, it's got a broad appeal. I think your your IPA like uh, lovers are gonna like it. I think your uh, your your general craft beer people are going to like this. Um, 
not my beer, right. but but a really but a really good beer. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna go three one. All right. Okay. Who's gonna go next? Um, Anna. I fine. I'll go next. So I'm gonna give it a three point four. Um, it is a very strongly flavored beer. Um, there is a dick load of flavor in it's this beer. It's definitely full flavored. It is. Um, so much so that it makes it difficult to drink quickly. Yeah. Um, or even at a moderate pace. Um, whenever, so I tell a little story about how we ended up with this. If you're watching on the YouTube, you see that we've just got this clear growler in front of us, like no labels on it, nothing. Um, the three of us were at the draft house last night. Uh, they blew a keg of something that, uh, Christmas John, ale, that the one, uh, we had the one that week. we had on our last episode. Um, they blew the keg on the Christmas ale and they put this one on and we've actually wanted to have this one on the show for a while. Um, so we got a growler from there <coughs> and, uh, I ordered one. And I swear, I think I sat and drank on that thing for at least an hour, if not an hour and a half, just because it is so incredibly flavorful that uh, I have to take it slow. Um, what I like about this is that uh, the hop profile on it. Um, and I was I was actually watching a video, and I found that this guy described. Uh, the hoppiness of IPAs really well. And one of the things that he criticized uh, some IPAs for, and I think you'll really identify with this, Mike, um, he criticized some IPAs for having too sharp and narrow of a hop profile. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it comes in, it hits you all at once, and it's, it's done. Um, what he described as a good IPA was one with a very broad hop profile. And I think that probably comes from the gradual implementation of the hops over the brewing period, um, is that <coughs> you get a wide range of hop flavor in it, um, a, a wide range of the experience. And so I think it's a killer IPA. That's why I give it a 3.4. Um, it's not super drinkable for me, although I can see that a lot of people are going to like this. Yeah, so I'm in a really good <laughs> spot because the same reasons that I would want to give it a high rating are the same reasons I want to knock it, if that makes any sense. Uh, so it's got a really high ABV. It's got a really... Uh, what is the ABV? It's like you... 10. Okay. It's high. Yeah. Um, it's got a really hoppy profile. And this is the, the kind of beer that I would have uh, enjoyed in my uh, much less experienced beer drinking days. Yeah, I think so. But it's also the kind of thing that you grow tired of quickly. You can't just drink and enjoy this. This is, it starts to become work to drink. Yeah. it It's like a, a pumpkin ale or a spiced drink of some sort. Like, it's good for one. It's also like a barley wine in, yeah. in, in many regards. Yeah. And so on that, like I, I really walk into a place and I get a, a, a glass of this and I enjoy it for the first half of the glass. Yeah. And then the last half of the glass, I'm like, oh, I got to finish this and get some lighter. So on that same note, I kind of love and hate the same things about it. Um, so with that said... I gotta go with three O. I mean, I, I would love to, to rate this higher. If if you gave me a beer and I took the first sip, it probably hit like a four. But by the last sip, it's down to like a, a two. You know, so yeah, we come in at like a three point two. Yeah, so okay. so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a three, and and I'm actually a little surprised at how low I'm I'm rating this beer, which is yeah. still very high. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah very very yeah. high. Well, and I mean, it's not beer advocate high, but yeah. you know, I would love this beer. If when I went to the draft house, I got a six ounce pour of it instead of a 12 ounce pour of it. Um, and I'm, I'm sure draft houses would love I'm, to implement that. I'm telling you, they, they can do that, but they're going to charge you for the 12 ounce pour. Oh, I, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but that's all I want is six ounces of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, it is enjoyable for six ounces. It's not super enjoyable for 12 ounces. I agree. I'm going to look up real quick while y'all are starting the game. The, uh, the ABV. Game. Yeah, let's play our game. Um, does this get you laid? 
only with a very small audience of uh, people who really appreciate a craft beer. Or if you have them, give them six of them. <laughs> oh, my. But uh, you may go to jail afterwards, so don't do that. Right. Okay, I was wrong. I was wrong on the ABV. It's 15 to 20%. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So definitely Cosby beer level. Definitely Cosby beer. Um. Uh, so be careful with it for sure. Don't drive. I, I'm not, I'm going to say this is not the sort of thing that's going to seal the deal for you with a vast majority of people. Um, people who are only starting to be introduced to craft beer, this is going to overwhelm them. People who like industrials, this is going to gonna hate murder this. them. Yeah. Um, you will be arrested if you give them this. <laughs> they will die. You are drugging them at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, however. I think that the beeries are going to be, whether they like it or not, are going to be so impressed you could get it because it's so hard yeah, to get. Yeah. yeah. There, is a, there is a niche of people where if you pull out this, this particular beer, they are going to have questions for you about who the fuck you know. Who did you sleep with? Yeah. yeah. I'm about to be you, so you know, there you go. Yeah. All right, John. So on, on the date, I, I think this is definitely a Hail Mary date, although it's a Hail Mary uh, uh, beer that you you need to know who you're dealing with. Yeah. Um, and and it, this is a great beer for consensual dates <laughs> <laughs> because it is very easy to become unconsensual very fast. Have them sign something. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, yeah I, I think I think you're right. This is this is also not a lawnmower beer. Uh, if if you uh, if you try and mow your lawn on this, you're liable to run over your child. And that's oh not a good thing. So uh, yeah, I, 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 I drank on. half of this and I'm feeling it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, your category involves mowing over a child. Yes, mine involves murdering industrial beer drinkers. Yes, and what was yours? It's for consensual days. <laughs> right, right. So all that uh, to say, drink responsibly. Drink I mean, responsibly. Yeah. seriously, drink this is a risky drink. We 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 get together every week. We talk about philosophy. We drink, and we have a good time. We love beer. We love alcohol. But seriously, people, uh, it is very important to us that while you're enjoying your alcohol, that you do it in a responsible yeah. manner. We would yeah. never want to encourage somebody yeah. to. We don't get behind the wheel and exactly. take off after having sex. Exactly. And yeah. this is one that is very easy to be irresponsible. So when you're drinking this. Make sure you have a ride set up. You're Ubering. I don't care what it is. But be prepared that this is going to knock you on your ass. Yes, yeah, absolutely. When they start slurring their words, quit going, hey, you want another beer? Yeah. Another beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you start slurring your words. Why are you doing it Well, the bartender yeah. should cut you off. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So back to the idea of this mystery cult. Uh, and I, I kind of want to want to get into the exactly what a mystery cult is. Um, yeah. Again, a mystery cult is... It, it's not an uncommon term. There was the mystery cult of Isis. Uh, there have been Christian mystery Wait, cults. Isis? Isis, the, the Egyptian goddess. Oh, there's okay, never a, mind. I was thinking today's Isis. Isis, Horus. Uh, uh, there's a Christian. You know, there, 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 there's, the horse cult. There, there's a bunch of these. Uh, this particular mystery cult, again, c there were secrets that were confined to the initiates. We don't know what the secrets are because there was, no, there was nothing written. What we have... Are um, in the Mithraeum, we have found pictures, and again, this is this is archaeologists looking at this stuff, uh, sociologists looking at it and making a judgment. So I don't want to to, to make our, our audience believe that that what I'm saying is 100 percent factual. We don't know. We're making some. We're it's making, hard for anything that old to be. Yeah, we're, we're making some some, some conjectures here, but. Uh, the, the general belief is that that there were grades of initiation, that, um, and, and we find this because we find pictures of this on uh, in the Mithraeum uh, mm -hmm. all over the world. The first grade of initiation is the raven. Uh, you move through that, and you become the bridegroom, and then the soldier, then lion. And by the way, the lion, I find this fascinating, the pictures of the lion were all of a man with a lion's head opened up and four wings sprouting out. Good that God. sounds a lot like some of the pictures that were described in the Old Testament of some of the angels. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you see that. Uh, uh, then you have the Persian, the Sun Runner, and finally the last one is the one that I find fascinating. If you make it through all of the initiations, the last one is the Potter, the Father. 
the, the again the, the the Roman word is potter for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we see pictures of this. And if you, uh, I don't know if y'all are familiar much with with Freemasonry and, and and some of their some of the initiations they have. But 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 if you've ever seen descriptions of this, uh, this might sound familiar to you uh, mm-hmm. in, in some parts because. Uh, the first picture that they have, and, and there's a lot that have been destroyed, so they're hard to see. We have we have five basic basic versions. The first one is a uh, a blindfolded naked man walking. Well, we don't see the naked man in Freemasonry, but you do see the blindfold mm-hmm. uh, a lot in Freemasonry. Uh, the second one, the initiate is still blindfolded, and naked, but he's kneeling and being being bound behind his behind his body. His arms are are bound there. So this is the the second step of initiation, we believe. The third, the blindfold is removed and you're being crowned. Mm-hmm. Again, there, uh, you, 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 you can see the, the Jacobin hat and stuff with this. Uh, the, the last one, you're trying to rise up and you're being held down. You're being restrained from rising. And finally, the, the last one that we have, and there's some missing between this that, that, that you can't see anymore. They've been destroyed. But you know that they were there in, in the Mithraeum. But the last one is uh, the person lying on the ground as if dead. And that's very, very closely related to a lot of, lot, lot of the initiations in Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. So you see this and you realize that there seems to be something here that's I'm not trying to make a connection between Freemasonry. What I'm trying to make a connection here is there seems to be something in the in the human condition about these things right. that seems to be happening. You know, it, it's really funny that you bring up Freemasonry because uh, me and a good friend of mine, uh, after we graduated college and we're looking for jobs, we're, we're looking for ways to increase our job pool. Yeah. And we actually looked at joining Mason, Masons yeah. uh, for that. And after doing our research, we, we kind of found that it was a dying cult. Yeah, it, it, it's and, not nearly you know, as big as it used to be. Yeah, the, that most of the people in it were old and, and probably not going to be good for our long-term job prospects. We just never did, but yeah. yeah. Well, you have to be invited to, 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 to do it anyway. But they won't so, invite yeah, you yeah. unless you ask. Yeah, yeah. If you want to be one, ask one. That's yeah. what the bumper sticker says. Yeah. Uh, but but I do find it at least interesting that, uh, you know, that there's there's... There seems to be something in the human condition here with the understanding of, you know, the blindfold, the, the restraining, the, uh, uh, the, the preoccupation with death. Mm-hmm. There, there's something there. And we see it over and over again. If you're an American historian, you see the American Indians did something real similar to this where they would blindfold you. They would hold you down. You would ritually die and then be reborn as a member of the tribe. Right. That sounds a lot like what's happening here. Yeah. Uh, so – Sociologically, I find this fascinating, uh, and, and and we kind of know this is going on. But now, this is the part that that, that, that is interesting to me: uh, is the leader of of this the highest level? Anybody, you know, you you can all make it to Patter, you can all make it to the Father, but the leader of the whole the whole I don't want to use the word lodge, but the whole church, I mm-hmm. guess, is the Patter Patrum, the Father of Fathers, right? Uh, you know how you say that in, in Italian? No. The Papas, which becomes Pope. Ah. Which becomes Pope. Right. Uh, we find that between the year 305 and 309 AD, okay, that's a pretty short period of time, but between the year 305 and 309 of the Common Era, or AD, CE, whatever, uh, up to nine of these leaders in the cult of Mithras names are carved in the basement of St. Peter's Basilica. It has their name in Pater Petraeum, Father of Fathers. Mm-hmm. That's interesting to me because St. Peter's Cathedral is, it's, it, it, it's, the lead, it, it's where the Catholic Church, at this point it would have been the Christian Church, mm-hmm. the only church in Christianity, the leader of the entire faith. They have a, another religion carved in the, right. the, the basement of the church. That tells me... That there's some kind of synchronization there. Yeah, there's we some all, connection. We also know at this time period that it was not at all uncommon for people not to be baptized until either their deathbed, like we've seen before, okay, or yeah. upon being made a an officer in the church. Mm-hmm. So many of these people aren't baptized until they become a bishop, and then you're baptized in the church. That makes me wonder about some things. Um, 
like, like Constantine on his like, deathbed? Like Constantine on his deathbed. It makes me wonder if, if, if at this time period there wasn't there wasn't this synchronization of multiple re- where, where you could be a part of two religions at mm-hmm. one time. Okay, there's a guy named. That's gonna uh, be some serious pressure to have to make a decision right as you're dying. All right. Uh, You've been practicing all these this time. Which one are you going to go with? Who I'm telling you. Who's going to send you to heaven or hell? There's this guy, Pratextatus, uh, Pratextatus, who was the father of fathers, the Pope, the leader of the of the cult of Mithra, and he declared this. This is this is written down from the time period in the first century. He says that he would willingly be baptized a Christian. If the crown of Saint Peter was granted to him, so if he be be made the leader of the Christian Church, he would willingly be, willingly be baptized and be able to unite these churches. Well, he he's not given mm. that. He dies. Ah, so close. Well, the Bishop of Sarasaus takes that title. The Bishop of Sarasaus is then made the leader of the Christian Church, and he is the first one to take the title of Papas of Pope. Mm-hmm. He unites those the, the, those the, those two those two religions at that time period. He kind of says, "Look, I am both." And shortly thereafter, the the cult of Mithra is is outlawed. It's it's no longer accepted. So when you put all this together, uh, my question for you is: with the facts that is, that have been presented to you, do you see a link between Mithraism and Christianity? I mean, yeah, I, I've always thought that that Christianity was was kind of much like Robin Hood. Uh, in that, if you look at the 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 stories, that all the things mostly happened, but it wasn't around a singular figure. There yeah. was there was bits and pieces stolen from a lot. There were a bunch of Robin Hoods. Yeah, and and and, and a bunch of of sheriffs and a bunch of kings, yeah. and they all kind of got mashed up into one story. And that's always my view on Christianity is, yeah, most of these things happened, but it wasn't around this one Jesus figure, and it wasn't around this one God figure. And at the end, we just kind of made this mishmash, and it was like, eh, okay, that works for me. Um, so, yes, I accept that, but it's kind of already toward my slant. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I look at it like the link between... Uh, Christianity and paganism. Well, it is paganism, yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, yeah. I guess by the definition of pagan, it is. But uh, Esther, who was okay. that? Drew. Yeah, no? with, with, with 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 Easter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but that that's kind of what I look at yeah. here, or any of the countless religions with a miraculous birth birth yeah. of the Savior who then dies. And is uh, and rises again and will come back. I mean that that's so common. Um, but we saw over and over again where they would uh, go into a place and they would kind of adopt some some practices. Yeah, yeah. And, and I suspect that's probably what it was. Uh, coming from um, the perspective, I, I I do consider myself a Christian. I do believe in in, in Jesus. I do believe in this stuff. Uh, but I also have have said over and over again that I, while I'm a Christian, I've got some real problems with the organized church. Yeah, and I think that um, I think that from a historian's perspective, I look at this and I say synchronization happened. Yeah, yeah. That obviously that there was borrowing. Now I won't go so far. I, I'll tell you, I came into this believing because I'd read these eighteen hundred it. Uh, books back back in college, I came into this believing that Christianity had borrowed a great deal from Mithraism. I actually came out of this believing that Mithraism was a product of the first century. Mm-hmm. Christianity was a product of the first century, and they were both kind of synchronizing something else. I don't know what that is. The historian in me looks at it, and they and he believes that that there was something common back there that both were drawing from, and 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 uh, that makes sense to me. I don't I don't because of the time period. Now that have, I don't think that means that Christianity is not true. I, 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 I don't I don't I personally don't believe that. I believe what that means is 
that that's the way that human nature evolves, that there is some great truth, whatever you call it, and and they're all drawing off each other. I don't care what you call it. L- let me ask you this, yeah. and, and I'm not asking the historian or yeah. the the Mike's religion. Yeah. I'm asking the philosopher. Yeah. Do you believe that outside of the, the cave of Christianity, that there is a perfect Christianity that, that, that lives somewhere out in, out in the, the ether? Or is, it, is man's input required to the religion? No, I think, I think there, is, there is a perfect. Uh, I, I, I genuinely believe that there is something out there that, 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 that we should all be, be going for. I don't think anybody's getting it right. Uh, I, I, think, I think all religion is an imperfect reflection of something perfect out there. And that comes but back damn to... damn it if we shouldn't try to be perfect. Yeah, well, that, that comes back to my idea that when I look around at the world... Now, I know this is this isn't always a popular view, but when I look around at all this stuff out here and, and how everything works together, I can't rationalize in my mind that this was a series of cosmic accidents that made this happen. It looks to me like there was a cosmic plan. Isn't that and, and, and please feel free to disagree with me, but but I'm I'm intrigued. Yeah. Isn't that somewhat backwards to the way you should think? For instance, wouldn't a cosmic god being be much further from your rationale than than the series of physics things? Wouldn't drawing something closer to your rationale draw closer to the universe you live in and further from God than? Do you see what I'm saying? I do, but I I don't I don't see it that way. Now, yeah. I, it's probably a product of my 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 upbringing. Yeah, I'm willing to to accept that there's a that we're all products of who we are. Yeah, yeah, with our, yeah, with our yeah. But I just can't look at what had to happen for everything to work out the way it is and say that we've had a series of cosmic accidents where they have all worked out perfectly to, to, to reach this. Can I you, just can't. Can you agree with this statement? Whether or not God is real or we're some product of a cosmic event that we build a human God to worship. I think I think without a doubt that that we as a society give a face and a name to something. That's un, ununderstandable. Now that having that doesn't bother me. Yeah. And I've said this before because I don't want to worship a God that man can understand. Yeah. Does that make any sense at all? Hell yeah. If man can understand it, it's not God to me. Uh, the, the very definition. It's fucking human. The very definition of God is that it's it's beyond our understanding. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but that having been said, I think we should seek to understand it. I think we should always seek to understand, and we should always be pushing that level. And at some point, you might prove that you're wrong with that, but it. If at some point you can prove that you're wrong, then then, then we need to accept that. It hasn't. We haven't gotten there yet, in my opinion. That Fair enough. Vaguely and, like absurdism. And, and and I love hearing this uh, yeah. because um, myself as a secularist, yeah, um, I like to get a. I'm going to say well thought Christian perspective. There are lots of Christians out there who would just like point to a book at me and be like, "Well, just read that, and then it all makes." And it's like, no, no, no. I want your thoughts. Yeah. Because I can form my own worldview. I, you have I look to believe this book because the book says to believe the book. Yeah, yeah. I, I can read the book and get something completely different than what you get. And I've I, read a lot of books. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I love hearing your perspective on the book and everything. <laughs> um, all that said, I'm going to stop now because Anna's been trying like hell to get in here, and I've. Have I've, I? Yeah, you had your, your fingers up. I did, and, and I've forgotten. And it's gone. It. Anyway, and anyway. Gone. But yeah, I, I, I love this, like, what I feel like is a very honest dialogue between the secularist and the Christian yeah. on what is God, what is the cosmic event, where did Christianity, the organized thing, come from, and the history of it. I, I love that dynamic kind of discussion on all and of it. And the fact that we can do it without becoming disagreeable. Yeah. You know, you can both under, you can understand each other's opinion. Yeah. That that's important. All uh, right, is the circle jerk over yet? No, I sure do uh, like no. talking to you. It's it, so nice. We're not mad at each other. It hasn't started yet. We're gonna do that Are after you sure? the show. Damn, I thought that's what this was. Are you in? <laughs> I have nothing to jerk. Well, you. Well, hey, you, hey, you, I'll give you something. Okay. <laughs> You've been <laughs> nothing to be jerked. <laughs> You've been criticizing the circle jerk. Go, go, go ahead and and, and give your two cents on this thing and. And, and, and where it all lied. I mean, I already gave my two cents. I said mm. that I, I think that uh, that Christianity 
overtook Mithraism. I, I think that Christianity, uh, well, I, I think churches, uh, organized religions are corporations, essentially. They are working within a, a market. The market is, uh, their goal is to fulfill this need that people have in their, in, within themselves to explain things that they can't understand. Um, and that it is the ability of a successful organization to um, dominate the industry that it's in. They are in the industry of religion. And that a really well-functioning uh, organization within that niche is going to do whatever it takes to uh, kill off its competition. Uh, sometimes they physically killed them. Sometimes they adopted their practices and then said, hey, guys, no, we're totally like the thing that you're already very familiar with. You should come Here's and be Easter one egg. of us. Exactly. Um, or an and, Ishtar egg. Yeah, and, and I think that's what Christianity did here. I think that's what they've done in Which a lot of places. interesting with the idea of Mithra coming from an egg. Yeah. yeah. But so, I, I think that they are really effective at what they do in, in trying to uh, fill this need within this, this industry. So let me ask you this. You've made your, criticism, your criticisms of organized religion. Mm -hmm. What is your view on an organized godlike origin, you know, Judeo-Christian-like beginning versus a secular beginning versus maybe we all live on a turtle's back. Or Where do, do you, you not want to share? What do That's you think okay the truth too. of the matter is? Are, are you trying to get me to define my religious position? I'm just asking you a question. Uh, so, you are free to or, or free not to? Oh, always. Um, so I actually find the characterization of... Um, non-theistic people's belief as um, believing that we are here by a series of cosmic accidents um, as being and, and I recognize that there are some people who believe that they are cosmic accidents um, but I, I think it is simply a, a chain reaction that was bound to happen um, the Elements that were interacting were, were bound to react with each other, and the way that those things interact, um, given the structure of the universe, was eventually going to probably end up with something like this. Um, oh, my God. And, okay. and, and I, I broke Mike. I'm sorry, Mike. You realize that you're, you're, you're essentially arguing the idea that if you put a thousand monkeys in a room and... With typewriters, they would eventually come out with Shakespeare's portfolio, right? I'll go further than that. I'll argue that one monkey in a room can come out with William Shatner's portfolio. Oh, God. <laughs> That's much easier, though. It wouldn't take long. <laughs> no. Oh! Uh, 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 I, I don't think that's the, th the same, though. Okay, I, I, I do think it's the same, I but, I, but, but, but I can respect you. I can respect you on that. Uh, I can circle jerk you, too. Um, Thanks, I guess. Real quick, before we yeah. finish this off, I'm, I'm just curious, because I've, I've told you the story, honestly, as unbiased as I can, yeah. without, I know I had my bias in, because I always tell my kids, you can't tell a story without bias. Right. Yeah. You can't, but I tried. What's your opinion on, is is Jesus, is the Jesus cult a, an outgrowth of Mithraism or not? I tend to think it's an, uh, it... I don't give the Mithraism cult enough credit for that. Yeah. I tend to think it's an outgrowth of the time period, and that's from my bias. So they're, you think they're both, yeah. there's synchronization between them instead of one. It, it, they, they were came competing up, They evolved together instead of one copying the other. Yeah, well, and, and they were competing religions. I think probably at certain points when, a, when an idea of Christianity came, came popular, that Mithraism would steal it, and when, when an idea of Mithraism came popular, and they kind of mishmash until... They merged, yeah. but then they had to pick a name. Exactly. And that was like the victory that Christianity had is they won the name game. Well, and they were also smart enough to allow women in. Well, I mean, if I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not arguing the, their strategy. I'm yeah. just arguing that whether whatever the reason is, they won the name game. They, well, got the they name. merged and then they outlawed the other one. Yeah. Which is what I would do. Yeah. 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 That's what any success... <laughs> Corporations, industries, yada yada. That's what you Scientology. do. Scientology. So, so let me ask you this. Oh, Scientology. Does this this newfound knowledge that you at least believe you've yeah, obtained yeah, yeah. change anything about your religion? No, I think it actually it it actually kind of strengthens my position. 
unexpectedly. I was expecting to come out on the other side of this. I, I came into this believing that Jesus, that the Jesus cult borrowed a great deal. And again, I'm using the word cult, guys. It's not a, it's not a derogatory term. I don't want you to think of it uh, as derogatory. Case, it's, yeah. it's a religious term. I came into this expecting to believe that the Jesus cult had borrowed extensively from Mithraism. And I came out of it believing that they both evolved simultaneously. Okay. So. Fair enough. Very cool. Yeah. Well. This was fun. It was. I liked it. It a little out of our. Uh, area, I, okay. I am glad. I am glad about this because we were debating whether to do the selflessness show yeah. or this show on Christmas. Yeah. And I think out of respect, yeah, it's yeah. better that we move yeah, this probably. next yeah, week, yeah, yeah. and then you know, and and there's some they're gonna. It'd be, be like posting a Satan meme on Christmas. Well, you know, there are those people, which is um, always a possibility. Yeah, no. but, but there are those who are gonna vehemently disagree with yeah. with with what's been said here. My pastor friend that listens every week is gonna yell at me the whole yeah. well, for a week after this. And 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 the idea here, I don't think. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, is not at all to disregard your reality, but to present you with other ideas that you can accept right, or reject. That's right. You know? That's yeah. right. We we, we want to open your minds. Yeah. Open our mind. Really, Everybody's minds. That that's more true. We don't do this for you. We do this to open our minds. If we can open yours, it's great. Because we're selfish. We're selfish. Yes. yes. So anyway, this was fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, if you want to check well, out some, before you do the plugs, everybody's about to tune out. I know you guys. That's what you do. Uh, I do want to tell you that later tonight we will right. be uh, doing a live stream live of our New Year's stream. show. Uh, we can't tell you when right now. Or, sorry, we can't tell you where right now because we haven't picked the location. We haven't. We're recording but this a little early. We're going to call this Three Drunk People on New Year's Eve. Yeah. But if you will go to... we get to, drunk before or during? Yes. <laughs> if you will go to sixpackphilosophy.com slash N-Y-E, that's November Yankee Echo. Or New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah. Uh, November we, Yankee Echo. We will have a link to the live stream uh, as well as info on where, if you're in the DFW area, you can come to to hang out with us. You yeah. should hang out with us. That come would be out. awesome. It'll be so So much fun. this is coming out in the morning. That's going to be that night, uh, somewhere in the like 10 o'clock to 2 a.m.-ish yeah. area. Um, and we're going to be having a party. We're, we're going to be, be drinking. Plastered. Plastered. And so we're going to be recording live. So you can come in and join us. So check it out. Sixpackphilosophy.com slash n Y E November Yankee Echo New Year's Eve. So anyway, <laughs> um, she was not going to put. If up you want to support the show, you can go to patreoncom slash philosophy. Get shirts. One time, nope, not there. Uh, one time, monthly, whatever you want to do. Um, they can't get shirts there. Not on Patreon. They should be able to get shirts on Patreon. Shut Check your that, mouth. John. Anyway, but if you want to get shirts or any other cool merchandise, you can do that at teespring.com slash store slash six-pack philosophy. You can find us on social media by searching, you guessed it, six-pack philosophy. Oh, you can get one of those. That's pretty cool. Um, well, let me tell you why you need to do the Patreon. Newsletter? Let me tell you why I need to do the Patreon now. Because we have some koozies for this year oh, yeah. that we're, we're going to send you. But come the first, we will have designed a new koozie. Yes, and mm -hmm. these koozies will be gone, and so. it's going to have my ass on it. So you don't want that that one. You it want will not this have one. your ass on it. It That's will not have my ass on it. It's not a fact. It might have his ass on it. So anyway, anyway. so uh, if you want to see my ass? No, never mind. Anyway, um, go on to Instagram. Everybody else has seen it. So <laughs> find us on social media. Don't forget to uh, subscribe. On whatever podcast or whatever platform you're listening to this whatever on, whatever platform, whatever whether that is a uh, podcast Republic Stitcher. or TuneIn Radio or Stitcher or iTunes or Google Play Music, um, smoke signals. Go start asking iHeartRadio for Six Pack Philosophy, please, because we're not on there. And well, fix that for us. We've applied, but we haven't heard anything back. Yeah, that, so go beg them for us yeah. to be on iHeartRadio, um, YouTube, definitely uh, subscribe. Like, heart, you can share. actually watch us on YouTube. Make asses. We of make ourselves. funny faces. We do. Um, That's just you. Sometimes we I make shoot funny the faces. finger at each other and often. So anyway, maybe I'll be naked. Nobody's listening anymore. So let's just uh, say cheers and uh, thank you guys. We've had fun and we hope you have too. Hey, cheers. Happy 2018. Because the next time you see us, unless you're at New Year's, it'll be 2019. Happy 2018. We hope you've enjoyed. 
Cheers. 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 Woo, that's loud. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.